What's up guys, welcome back to IT Security Labs and this is yet another video where I show you how I'm preparing for the OSCP and today we're going to be attacking the Machine Shocker it's part of the Hack the Box series it's an easy machine so we don't expect too much from this machine but I'm learning a lot so let's go ahead and actually attack this machine right now so the first thing that we need to do is I like to start with the ping 10.10 .10. 10.56 as you can see I can get my pings back and the next thing like just like on the, mo most of my machine is I just run a nmap scan so let's go ahead and do that this is a um, 56 so we just let our nmap run and this shouldn't take too long from what i understand and while it's running i just wanted to tell you that um go ahead and join our study group uh we'll be having google hangouts and we'll also um be sharing some ideas so just make sure that you join us uh we have a link to our facebook group in below and our results are out so we have port 80 which is good then we also have um 222 which is ssh so it looks like um it's an obscure ssh uh, ports that they have but while i have these results let me open a new tab and i like to run uh Durbuster. i just like to brute force the directories while um i'm observing the web interface was i realized that there will be more results there so let's let's just throw our go buster script over there more like uh some this is part of my notes i just throw it every time i have a machine so let's let's just proof force those uh directories and at the same time let's go and check out port 80 so 10.10.10.56 .10 what do we have oh we have a little bug with a hammer and that's interesting so let's see we always inspect our element don't bug me it's a jpeg nothing there okay really there is nothing don't bug me <laughs> okay so we know there is nothing there uh we can come back and do a reverse google image search of this one if we get really desperate but um let's see what we have here okay so this is this is going to take a while so let me just pause this video over here and i'll be back once it's done so it looks like um go is taking forever to load so i went ahead and loaded my derb instead which is the same thing but lighter and we were able to bust some directories here through brute force and there's this cgi bin directory index.html and server status and we can try to open these links but as you can see permission is denied here which is very interesting so that made me very curious so i was like wow what kind of directory is this just cgi just bin in google and search for that it's a folder used to house scripts that will interact with web browser oh that's good so we know that it's a folder for scripts is there any vulnerability for this wow there we go vulnerabilities and wow this is from 2002 so not sure if this will work but we can read through this to see well, if we can see anything here all right 
So now we know that we do have this place that we don't have permissions to. Let's go back, see what else we found. So after finding CGI dash bin here, I decided to run derb one more time. And this time I was looking for any specific, I specified the scripts. And since um, I'm suspecting this is a shell shock, I specified .sh and sure enough we did find a user.shell so this one right here which is very interesting so now we can go to this url let's try to open that link and we can download this let's just save the file okay what is that so let's open a new terminal Instead, let's go to, to my downloads. So in my downloads, we have a user.shell. So we can do a cat user.shell. Okay, just an uptime test script. So there's nothing in there. Well, so we have index.html. Let's open that in a new tab. Okay, it's the same thing that we saw earlier. Then let's go back. Server status. Does this even show us anything? No, we have no permission there as well. But this CGI.bin is interesting as well. So let's do more digging here. Uh, since we already know that we're running Apache. Let's, okay. So from 2014, I remember this, um, I read a semantic article. Let me see if I can find it. I think it was called everything you need to know about shell shock. All you need to know about. Yeah, there we go. This is the article that I read a while ago when I was interested in this. It sounded fascinating. So I'm a little familiar with this vulnerability it's shell shock and as you can see here we do have an exploit db uh, script so that means metasploit will work with this you know it's late it's almost 1 30 a.m today let me finish this one with metasploit quick very quickly if this is the case then this video will be very short. Then at a different time, I will just come and do the manual exploit where I can uh, in get a reverse shell using the shell shock um, wildcards. I've seen this one before. So this is an article that I can read about shell shock. And from what I'm seeing here and my results, I might have a shell shock. So why not just quickly run msf console let's go to the console and quickly just uh exploit this so from here let's just search apache and the cgi see if we see anything whoa whoa whoa, whoa. that's too much okay so this yielded better results this one is what we need i think this one so we do copy and use let's use this one because i think that's what we found out there and it's the only one that says shell shock so over here it was this one you still want to look through all these results but shell shock is specified there and enter show options but the only ones that we need are our host local host and target uri so let's just do that set our host our host 10 to 10 to 10 
56, I believe. And we have to set, set L host. 10.10.14.33 okay then we have to set target URI this one paste and what we need is the URI that we got right here which was this part. And copy that. And where is it? Right there and paste. Then from there, we can just do a run or exploit. I like run better. And see, let's see what happens and sure enough looks like it worked if we cd and go to home ls we have a user shelly so that's it the same thing so that's good we can see that we have a user shelly so we can cd to shelly's directory Less. Well, okay. So here's our first flag user dot text. Okay. So Metasploit makes everything look very very easy, as you can see here. And as usual, after we are done with that, let's see if we can escalate our privileges here. So to get out of this Metapreda shell, we just have to type shell. And from there, if we say bin slash bin slash shell, negative i, we get even a better shell. But this is not what we need. We know that we can execute Perl commands without any passwords. That means that we can just say sudo bin shell. Let's do that right now. We know that we can just run any Perl commands without passwords. So this one should go and this one should spawn us at yet another console. This time is root. So if I enter and say, who am I? I'm root. So cat slash root, root the text. I should be able to get the flag and that's it. We became root and this machine has been pawned using Metasploit. Next, we shall do a manual exploit with that, which I think we can upload and get a backdoor, which is also very simple. So see you next time. Remember to subscribe and like and join our study group. See you later.